Dr. Buteyke, after working with hundreds of people, made the following conclusion. The horizontal position line intensifies breathing. Patients with asthma, heart disease, hypertension, stenocardia often have acute states at night. If they lie down during the daytime and lay down for two, three hours, the breathing gets heavy and the attacks come. Many severely sick patients afraid to lie down. This is sensible. We should lie down only for sleeping. Our patients cannot control their breathing at night and hence sleep is poison for them. Dr. Buteyke, public lecture in the Moscow State University on 9 December 1969. Imagine that you sleep in a certain position at night. What you can do, you can measure your breath holding time. You sleep in a certain position for half an hour, maybe one hour time and you wake up you can put a ticking clock and check how much is your breath holding time. You can find out that certain positions are better. For example, lying on the tummy or left side usually is the best for people. Now, sleeping on the back usually re reduces breath holding time two times. Breathing becomes two times heavier. And therefore, sleeping on the back is a very negative factor for our health. So, let me write here, sleeping on the back. Dr. Buteyke told the following about sleeping on the back. When the sick asthmatic is lying on the back, he is breathing with wheezing. When he turns on the belly, wheezing disappears. We suggest to sleep on the belly, on a hard bed. Dr. Buteyke, public lecture in the Moscow State University, 1972. Later he goes further. He suggests the mechanism why sleeping on the belly is good for our health. The sick should be laid on the belly. This compresses the rib cage, abdominal muscles and walls of the belly, decreasing respiration. Dr. Buteyke, public lecture in the Moscow State University, 1972. Another factor relates to our eating habits. In the past we did not have abundance of food, but now it's on the west, it's not a problem. So we eat more. In the past, hunger was the norm. So what happens when we eat more, when we have too much food? When we eat, we produce stress for digestive organs. We need to digest the food. Later, these food particles should be deposited in different parts of our body that produce also stress for them. So meals, when they are big, and the bigger they are, the more stressful they are. You can practice on yourself. If you have an ordinary meal, and you completed this meal. Imagine that there is maybe a cheesecake or steak or something heavy to eat. And you eat when you are not hungry. What, what happened with your breathing? Measure your breath holding time. You might be surprised or even shocked. Your breath holding time, index of oxygenation, can drop two, even three times just because of heavy meal and just because of eating without hunger. So because of that, let me write next factor, overeating. What happened next to overeating? When we eat too much, our breathing becomes heavy. This is we already found. Now, when our breathing is heavy, we have even more tendency to eat. Why? As pupils of doctors Buteyka found that hyperventilation and CO2 participates in the permeability of membranes of cells to glucose. So, when people hyperventilate, CO2 in the blood gets low and Glucose is driven from the blood inside the felt cells. That means when people breathe heavy, most of people, most of us, have a tendency to accumulate extra fat. So we become more and more fat. And the same experiments by Dr. Buteyke and his colleagues with patients when we were trying to retrain their breathing found the opposite effect. If a patient has heavy breathing and this patient gradually starts to learn how to retrain the breathing pattern, then this patient who is obese would lose appetite. He would not be hungry, but he would have energy. Because now, when CO2 is higher, fat would be driven from fat cells into the blood, and this person 
would get an energy. He does not have hunger, so he would be functioning well. He would be feeling well. Next parameter of hyperventilation is overheating. Modern people spend a lot of time indoors. That was not the case 100, 3, 500 years ago. We were more outdoors, we were more outside on fresh air. And indoors we usually have different air temperature. You can see many people who are going, for example, to shopping malls, to buses, other public transport, waiting rooms, and they can spend 10, 20, 30 minutes wearing the same warm clothes indoors, inside. So what happens with briefing? The briefing, of course, would be heavy. Why? Because we have to give off a certain amount of heat. Usually we do it through body parts. But when it is not possible, our organism starts to remove extra heat through briefing. Dr. Buteyka said about this effect. It is noticed that increased temperature or overheating increases briefing not only in dogs, but in humans too. This is particularly noticeable in children. Dr. Buteyka public lecture in the Moscow State University, 1972. So he talks about children and the high metabolism, but we also know that parents who are very protective, they try to put more clothes on the child, and that can make them much sicker because children produce much more heat. So here is another quote by Dr. Buteyka. The metabolism of the child is about two, three times higher. When it is called for an adult, children feel comfortable. But we are provided with five layers of clothes and then a hat on the top. Overheating intensifies breathing and the child gets a cold, not from the draught, but from their own hyperventilation. Then he is even more insulated, more overfed. It is well known in a large and poor family there is only one short for all children. They run on snow, bare feet and all are healthy. In many countries the climate is hot. And swaddling is not possible with, for example, blankets and other clothes. What was the solution? In fact, in Asia it was used for centuries. We were taking wooden sticks, put them around the body of the baby and wrap them tightly with cords so that they could not breathe heavy. At the same time, air exchange was normal. So it was another solution of two problems at the same time. Swaddling and normal heat exchange. The next factor is nutritional deficiencies. During the last hundred years, we had a big change in our dietary habits, what we eat. In the past hundred, two, three, five hundred years ago, we were eating much more fiber. Such products like sugar, white bread, were often um, not possible to get. For example, sugar was very expensive to 300 years ago. It was accessible only to very rich people. So, diet had much more fiber, much more vitamins. And now, when we get less vitamins, less minerals, other nutrients, certain parts of the body, of the human organism, start to suffer. And as soon as any system of the body is under the stress, the immediate react would be hyperventilation. What is practically found in many studies that, for example, patients with asthma can benefit from magnesium because if many asthmatics are deficient in magnesium and if magnesium deficiency is corrected, then breathing is a little bit improved. Breath holding time is higher, so we breathe lighter, we have less symptoms of asthma. Similarly, for example, essential fatty acids. It was found that it is good for heart patients. So some heart patients who are deficient in essential fatty acids, they, they will get something that is required for the body and their breathing would be lighter, easier, so they would have less problems with heart. 